Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Art of the Mating. This week we're joined by Stephen, the founder of Trojan Track. It's a very innovative tool that I just wanted to highlight how machines are changing the way we deal with horses. And this is a very interesting application, the application of welfare. How can we use biomechanics, biomarkers on the horse to tell us if the horse is lame, what degree it's lame, and if we should take action. This product could have a revolutionary effect on the game of horse race. I was delighted Stephen was able to join me. Thank you for joining us for this discussion. We are pushing towards our thousand follower goal. We're inching up every, every single day, but we need you to give us that extra push. So if you haven't already, if you, I'd love if you hit like and you hit uh, subscribe, that helps immensely to spread the word of what we're trying to do, which is just tell people about the great sport of horse racing, not just from a betting perspective, which I feel is saturated, but from a bloodstock perspective and an insider's take on what makes this sport fit. If you haven't already, I'd love if you uh, supported us by buying a share in one of our horses. You can use the code the art of the meeting, 50 euro. What better deal can you get? Anyway, enough of me. Let's just start the chat with Steve. Hello everyone and welcome. We have Stephen O'Dwyer from Trojan Track to continue our series talking about are machines going to take over horse racing? Well, Stephen, you very much hope so. Um, your startup, <laughs> Trojan Track, tell people what it's all about. So, yeah, the, the word machine. So we're using machine learning to track a horse's movement as they walk, delve into that deeper and look for biomechanics in them to look for injury. So... On average, there was a study done that trainers, when they're looking at their horse for injury, there's a 72% disagreement rate. So one trainer versus the other trainer for 72% of their horses, they'll disagree on whether a horse is grade two lameness, grade four lameness. So we're hoping to come in, use our technology and just say, look, definitive objective data, your horse is grade two, grade three, grade four lameness. Okay, so let's go back to right at the start. What? Yeah. what exactly is being lame what 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 is what does that how does that manifest itself and how does that in turn lead to an injury yeah so my background wouldn't be in the the horse industry at all so i'm looking at this purely from biomechanics so i'll be looking at stride lengths stride velocities stride angles how one part of the body moves versus another part when say the left leg is leading or the right leg is leading so if you see say the sacrum of the horse dipping when maybe the, the left leg is grounded, you know, okay, look, this might be their normal health line move, or baseline movement. So we'll, we'll say, okay, that's okay. But if it's not their baseline, we can flag that and say, look, there's something, there's something of the issue here. Either check it out or pull, pull them from training just to make sure that there's no horses being trained through any serious lameness and that just goes unnoticed. And... The lameness then in turn can lead to fractures, it can lead to uh, uh, various types of injuries, which could have a huge impact on the horse's well-being. Yeah. It would be great maybe, Stephen, if you could show us your product in action. So what is this solution that is Trojan Track? Yeah, sure. So I'll just share my screen here so you can... It's more of a, a visual thing, so it'll be easier when I share my deck. So our solution is step one, the trainer will have a camera on a tripod, most likely a, a smartphone camera. They'll click record, the horse will be walked by the camera and it'll get uploaded to our servers. Step two here is our servers will pick up 52 different points on the horse. So we're doing a lot of focus ar around the hooves. So the hoof angle when they land and stuff like that, that's very important in terms of lameness. And then step three, we use those 52 points over the whole video and we convert that into biomechanical data. So the velocity of the, of the feet, like I said, the internal stride angles and stuff like that. So this is the kind of most and telling. Do you, need, do you need a baseline sorry. of that horse? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we take so the baseline of movement. Do you need a baseline of that horse before you start? Yeah, okay. so we compare everything to that horse's baseline because as you probably know yourself, there's no two horses that walk exactly the same. So we can't put a gold standard on the walk. We just say, okay, has he moved from his baseline at all or have they regressed in any way? So 
here's the 52 points okay. in action and here. What? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Sorry, yeah, here's the 52 points in action here. It's kind of hard to explain by words how it works, but as you can see, it gives you a, a general image of how the horse walks. Now, we won't be showing the trainer this because, again, the trainer can just look at a video himself and say, okay, he might be lame, she might be lame. But it's from this data, over 120 frames a second, that we're able to convert that into biomechanical data. Um, here's it. And just you uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Speed this back. Just go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, you go ahead there because I'm probably talking too much here. Uh, and when a trainer uh, whips out their phone and takes a video of um, of the horse, how quickly do they get feedback, and in what manner is that feedback that there could be an issue here? So at the moment, because we're in an early stage of technology, the feedback is a couple of hours. That's what we're, but when the deep neural network is fully built, our biomechanical code is all inputted, it'll be around three or four minutes. So you could do, say, 25 horses on your stable, you run them all, and within three minutes, you'll get each individual report on their, on that horse. So again, it's not real time, so you might have to be sitting around waiting for a report, but... I think the two or three minutes you, you spend waiting for that horse's report could be the difference between them getting ran into a more se- serious injury or just pulling them from training that day. So when you think about the future of your tools, Stephen, and, you know, it's hugely commendable work that you're working on, you know, horse welfare is something that should be at the foremost of all our minds in, in horse racing. Do you see yourselves as a... Um, a reactionary tool or is this best utilized as something that's proactive so people should every week uh, take a video of their horse or is it that you if you spot an initial um grading of lameness from zero to what five then you you're best to use your product then yeah so we think of this as a proactive tool like there, there are better reactive methods to use like the wearables you might have a you get get a bit more idea because you'll check the heart rate you'll check the respiration but this because it's so quick to take a video of a horse walking by a camera that it can be utilized as a proactive tool and again like i said with the disagreements with the trainers earlier analyzing a horse by eye it's not 100 percent accurate so if we're able to be as proactive as the eye then that means we'll just be able to help trainers catch that that bit more injuries and just help the horses a, a tiny bit more. If, if that's all we do is a tiny bit more help that one or 2% that goes through the cracks, then we'll be very happy. When you think about what the future of horse racing and how you can play a part, what would be your utopia for something like Trojan <laughs> track and how would you like to see it within the industry? Um, I think in an ideal, ideal world, we'll be kind of in with the welfare bodies. So with the HRIs, the BHAs and the welfare bodies in the US that say there was a case with a horse called Mongolian Groom. He was found to have two stress fractures in his legs before he ran in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Our ideal case is we'll be analyzing those horses, say in the Breeders' Cup Classic in the six weeks leading up to that race. And we'll be recording them almost every hour on the on the days of the races. So we can see for sure that no horse is getting ran in, in any of these races, be it a massive race like Mongolian Grooms or a normal race in, in Navin, say, today, um, that they won't be going through and there's, horses won't be breaking down. So I think we're initially targeting the trainers, but end goal, big end goal is the welfare bodies and having it as a tool that you use every day or for every race that's just to get that quick sign off and say, yeah, he's okay to race. Okay, fascinating. And when you think about those uh, big races, have you got examples of uh, wh- when it might go wrong, or what that you know how you can get ahead of something beyond just the British Cup Classic? Is it something that uh, sometimes people can't even notice that this this data can actually give us a a whole new window into um, how a horse is feeling? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go back to that Mongolian groom case. Um, the vet reports before the, gate, uh, the race 
they, he was analysed by five or so different vets a couple of times before the race, and a few of the vets said he was short behind. Now, these vets wouldn't know this horse in the six, seven weeks leading up to the race. They would have only seen it on the day or on the three days leading up to the race. So they wouldn't have that data in the background to say, okay, is he normally short behind? Is this something that's normal for him? Because a lot of horses, they could be short behind their whole lives, and that's normal. But if they had that data to say, look, in the races leading up to this, he was completely fine. His movement was very fluid. And now suddenly he's short behind. It'll trigger a lot more um, action to be to be taken before the race. Now, he wasn't pulled out of that race. And I think in hindsight, looking at the vet report saying he was short behind, you could say, okay, look, was, was there an error there? But I think with more objective data, you could make a more definitive answer to that question. Was there an error there? But bef- because it was all done by eye, he was a little short behind. It's it's kind of all up in the air at the moment. And I'm really interested from uh, you, your background. So you don't come from a racing background, enjoy it as a fan. Um, but the uh, problem you've come ta- to tackle, how has the software you're using and the software uh, development in this space changed in the last few years that has allowed you to do this and how is it changing even today yeah so i came across this software when i was doing my thesis in ucd but it was on human subjects and again i'm not i don't have a massive horse background but i would have always been following it and one of the things that i just remember was you know the lead up to cheltenham and the article will come out from racing post with the x and say Faheen has said has a setback. He's missing this race, and I always had it in my head like Jesus, these unbelievable athletes are getting injured the whole time. So I then looked at the tech in terms of as so I started kind of doing a bit of my own research during college, but not nothing to do with the thesis, and seeing okay instant rates for injuries. How do they analyze it at the moment? And I just saw how subjective it was, and I thought, look, I'm young. I may as well take the chance now while I can, to, while this tech is brand new now. I saw Byron Rogers doing it in the sales sphere and he was using a tech called Deep Lab Code, I think. And we used that for our initial prototype yep. just to test out, look, does it work? And I just saw, okay, look, it's it's some it's something that if there's a few players trying to bring it into in, into the industry now, maybe in five years, a load of players will be doing it. And I was in a u- unique position to say, look, I'll try it now. Um, now down the line with this tech, like it uses GPUs, which is... A sort of uh, computer processing technique, and they're out, they're getting better and better, doubling their processing powers every two years. So down the line, I know I said it'll be three or four minutes for the report to get back. Down the line, you could have the camera there, and the trainer be looking at the camera, and real time it'll just flag straight away if there's something wrong. So I think that's the future of this sort of tech, anyway. And imagine how exciting that is, right? That you know we have. You, we've seen in Melbourne the uh, interventionist, I would describe, approach to the racing authorities to have there have taken to ensure the safety of the animals. But it has come, you know, we've seen the um, significant uh, how uh, physical load that was placed on horses like State of Rest. And these, yeah. were, um, when he went on to win the Cox Plate um, in 2020, um, one, uh, when you think about how this product can and you speak to welfare organizations and, and assist them, is it the trainer's friend is it, or is it the trainer's foe? How, how do you think about uh, making the um, experience as uh, seamless as possible? I think for this product anyway, we're making it the trainer's friend that... They don't have to put any thought. Now, I know this report on the screen here shows a few graphs, but that's the vet report that they can show the vet. We're trying to make it as simple as possible, almost like a red flag, amber flag, green flag, just to say warning, maybe point them to the direct, the part of the horse that we feel might have some sort of issue and say, that's it. We're not giving them a recommendation to pull anything from a race. We're just putting the information into their hands. And again, these trainers, like they know so much about the horse themselves personally, they'll be able to interpret that themselves and say, look, he sometimes is stiff uh, after traveling to, to a certain race. He's sometimes stiff after doing a bit of hard work up a hill. So 
they'll be able to interpret that data then as well themselves. But in terms of the welfare bodies, the trainer might see it as a foe because they might arrive with a horse and the horse might look lame, but, and we backtrack their data and it shows that there has been a deterioration. Um, but again, a lot of data has to be collected before then. And I think the trainers will start realizing as they're using the product that it, that it is their friend because you know the last thing they want to see is another horse getting broke a horse of theirs getting broken down in a race and and they let them off and gave them the go ahead to run that day so you seem you should be commended for bringing this uh, innovative technology to the racing game and of course it, with the racing game i noticed the very obvious thing to state, but a horse cannot yeah. speak. So yeah, you, yeah. Can, uh, you don't get that tangible insights that if I said to you, uh, you know, it's uh, my my right toe is sore. I, you know, my baby toe is sore. I can tell you exactly what is going on from uh, a biomechanical perspective. What applications are you seeing that are kind of like this in, in innovative spaces? And it could be in humans, it could be in animals that people should be watching out for. Um, there's a few Irish companies actually that are doing stuff like this with humans. So there's one in Galway called Precision Sports Technology. They're doing it in sort of like a weightlifting sense that athletes are going into the gym. They might be young, clueless, don't know how to do a squat. You put the phone in front of you and it'll tell you uh, if you're leaning. You know, if you see me, if, Stephen, <laughs> if you see me in the gym, don't worry. Uh, I, I, I have that rounded back, not straight back. So it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. not the... The young uns don't hurt. Yeah, there there'll be a few red flags in, in, in your one anyway. Um but but there's there's a few similar technologies as well. Another one coming out of Trinity called Kinemo that the physios are gonna start hopefully using. So it is a it is a technology that's sort of coming into the sports science space. Um and yeah, and, and like you said, By Byron Rogers and um, Tom Wilson in the US, they're using it in sort of a sales sense as well. Putting, putting it in with, say, like sires, progeny, stuff like that, biomechanics. So it's a kind of exciting new technology, and it's only at the start of it now, and I'm really interested to see where it goes, even if it's not with my company, just whatever company, there's, there's going to be some major breakthrough coming up. If people want to get in touch with you or uh, you know, learn more about Trojan Track, what's the best way to do that? Um, we have a website, trojantrack.ie, so you could hop onto that, you'll see our Twitter or Instagram, and my email is stephen at trojantrack.ie, just drop me a line, my phone number's on the website as well if you want to give me a text or a ring, I'm always, I'm always sat at the desk with the, the life of, a, of a, a founder, but I'm always at, sat at the desk, so I'm always happy to take a call at any time. Absolutely, and uh, a final question, Stephen, what's the current state of play? Uh, with Trojan Track, are, are you trialing it anywhere? Are you looking for trialists? Um, wh where where are you at right now? So we just started a trial in the Kubler Yard in the US. Now there's a few teething problems there, so we just have to sort that out before we we get that going again. And we are hoping to do it as trial on a yard in Ireland. And um, we haven't decided fully where that we want to do that yet. So um, if there are people listening that have a yard in mind that they think we should be doing the trial in get in touch with me again and I'll be happy to, happy to take a call. Well, Stephen, well done on all the innovation so far. I'm really looking forward to checking back in in a year's time and no doubt seeing uh, some incredible uh, work uh, to ensure the welfare of the animals we love so much. Um, and uh, well done so far and uh, best of luck over the coming year as you uh, work out those trials and uh, see where it takes you. Great. Thanks a million for having me, Jack. What a great discussion that was with Stephen. Uh, if you have any comments for him or you want to get in touch in any way, I've left his details below. If you have topics or companies you'd like us to highlight going into the future, just let me know in the comments. It couldn't be easier. If you haven't already, I'd love you to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. And until next time, I hope you've enjoyed the art of the mating. Thanks, everyone.